All right, uh, Biko, it's good to have you back. Uh, we apologize to our, our viewers. Really, thank you so much for staying with us. Uh, this is just Nigeria Network, but then we'll try to, you know, surmount it. Biko, let's quickly delve into today's topic. The, the EFCC... All right, uh, Biko, I think uh, we're having a bit of an issue with um, uh, the network... We really apologize to our audience. Please, uh, uh, do, you, uh, you know, keep faith. Okay, BKO is here. BKO is here. Thank you so much, BKO. So let's quickly you know, delve into today's topic. Um, the EFCC and the DSAs have distanced themselves from the invasion of the home of uh, justice of the Nigerian Supreme Court, Mrs. Mary Odile Nabuja. What do you make of this whole scenario? I think it's a, this is a very shameful development. Uh, what I understand is that um, different harms of the Nigerian security um, was involved in the attempts to search the home of the number two judge in our country, the second most senior Supreme Court judge in our country. And it was based on the warrant, the search warrant issued by a chief magistrate's court in Abuja. So how does a chief magistrate court listen to two so-called whistleblowers, gives a directive to go and search the home of a very senior Supreme Court judge and the EFCC will claim that it was not aware. What, I'm, what I've been told is that Right, um, Biko, we seem, we seem to have a um, lost connection with you again. This is Nigerian network. Okay, Biko is back. Security operatives. Well... Um, we seem to be having a bit of an issue with uh, BKO's um, network where he's, he's not in Lagos at the moment. You know, he's somewhere far away within the country, uh, you know, in search of, you know, things, answers, you know, to Nigerian problems, you know, doing a lot of research, doing a lot of investigative journalism, you know, investigative reporting into things that are happening in Nigeria. But we are already receiving your questions, you know, are... Um, you know, our viewers who are always keeping faith with us talk about Olushola Julius Evans, uh, Fabian Akaze. We can see your questions there. Uh, so w we hope that the Biko will definitely join us back to, you know, answer some of these questions. Biko, we seem to be having you back. Can you hear me? I said I can hear you clearly. Every time you talk, I hear you clearly. Yeah, we seem to be losing your, uh, your audio here and your connection. Your visual is freezing. Okay, let's um, move to the qu next um, topic. We, we might visit the first topic again because we have our, uh, questions there from our viewers. Uh, talk about the Anambra election. In 2015, President Goodluck Jonathan delayed the presidential election for six weeks to enable the Northeast to participate in the election and guarantee the safety of voters. It, it's now clear, BKO, that the Southerners fear IPOB's orders more than the constituted authority. Do you buy the, the, the idea that a number of elections should be postponed? No, I do not support the idea of postponing the election. What I want to see is enough security put on ground to protect the 
voter if this will be as And we know that the security state has changed. We need to let the people see the efforts that we are making to protect them on election day. We are, we've been told that all the 34,000 policemen that the IG deployed to the state have arrived at number of states. So what are they doing at this time? People need to see them on the streets. That's what is called show of force. People need to see them on the streets. People need to see them driving around the streets of Anambra state in their uh, vehicles, in their armored vehicles, and other, other operational vehicles, so that the people will feel convinced that indeed this is an election that they will not be. So that they put the signs that security has been put in place for them to protect them on the election day. It will be of, uh, the, the civil defense also announced that they were deploying 20,000 personnel to an Ambra state. So where are they? We need to begin to see the, the security operatives that have been deployed to, 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 to uh, protect people uh, on election day. It shouldn't be on election day that we start seeing people. Let, let the people begin to see them now as a way of building their confidence that uh, nothing will happen to them if they come out on election day. Right. Uh Right, Mikhail, INEC said 86 out of the 5,720 polling units in the state have no voters and thus would not be deploying personnel and materials to the polling units without voters. And that 894 polling units have between 1 and 49 voters. Do you suspect voter apathy already? No, of course there will be voter apathy uh, in the light of current developments in the southeast region. Ordinarily, is is the character of our elections that on election day, people really will come out and vote. We do. We, we never achieve uh, a tremendous uh, turnout on election day in our country. A number of election uh, won't be an exception. It's worsened. The case of a number of election is worsened by the insecurity in the southeast region so if we have if we've had poor turnout in all the elections that we have had in recent history the fact that we have been having all kinds of violent combustions in a number of states and other states of the southeast no state is left out suggests so then that the election in a number of states will record a low turnout that is something that is easy to predict. There is no way that you are going to have a, a, a massive turnout or impressive turnout. The security situation guarantees that the turnout will be low. But what we cannot accept is to not have that election hold because the people have a right to choose who their leaders are. And the time for the people of Anambra State to choose the, the people need to be allowed to exercise their franchise. The people must be encouraged to exercise their franchise. And the best encouragement for our people is for security to be tight, for the people to see that Nigerian armed forces have come to protect them against harassment, both in the days leading to uh, the election and
Right, be careful. Uh, Okay, okay, be careful. Uh, let's change talk now because of our time. You know, the recent happenings in the world of sports, you know, talking about the mixed reactions, trailing planned recall of Victor Moses, or Dionic Alo, to Super Eagles. Geno Raw has been the coach of the Eagles for close to five years. Is bringing back Igalo a sign of rebuilding process? And is this the best service for the country? Well, looks like, uh, Biko, if you're there, let's try to confirm whether you're there, if you can hear me. Looks like uh, we've lost um, connection again. I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Okay, Biko is back. So did you get a question on the uh, on Igalo? Bring him back, um, uh, Victor Moses. I mean, bring him back, Igalo. Is this a sign of rebuilding process? And is this the best service for the country? You know, I, I, I am not totally against it. There are times when you bring in these um, experienced super good players as a way of um, motivating others. Because their presence in the newsroom will ginger other players and they can, they can help the coach to even train some of the players, to offer advice to players. You can imagine what a 36 year old the role that the 36 year old Cristiano Ronaldo can play in the newsroom, I mean, in the, in the dressing room of Manchester United. When things appear difficult, you can look up to them to provide guidance for the younger ones, to provide direction for the younger ones, to stabilize the dressing room. Um, we saw Coach Onigmede do that during the 2002 World Cup. And he brought in an old player. And he told us that that player was not going to play, but that he would help him in stabilizing. And he's very much an active player, still not to offer his country. He's not, he's not as old as um, Cristiano Ronaldo, and he's still playing. You know, and it's still, if Cristiano Ronaldo is still the captain of the Portuguese national team and he's still scoring, he's still setting records, then I know John Halo is younger than him, still has um, some more to offer his country. But whether he can um, displace the current set of Super Eagles strikers is a different. Uh, a kettle of fish, but I think it's still there are games when uh, it will still um, be able to deliver the goods, maybe uh, as an impact substitute or something like that. So we have Osime is in the form of his life. Victor Osime is in the form of his life for Napoli. You know, we have Onoachu. These guys have already shown that they are among the best strikers in Europe. You know, and uh, in, in Africa. But in my view, if we are bringing in uh, players like uh, Odion Ihalo or Victor Moses, they are merely going to help the younger players improve. I don't think that they are good enough to take the first team places from, uh, the, from, from the younger players. But they can also help the younger players to become even better players. And um, occasionally, they can still feature for their national team. We also Jamila did. He scored a goal against uh, against uh, Colombia. Right, you know, right. so I think it's not the first time that this sort of uh, recall to the national team will wow. happen. But I, the coach knows what to do. Um, Maybe they are just going to get the chance to to feature for a few minutes in um, in some games or maybe some games that are uh, not so significant. They can be brought in to play or when we have uh, 
injuries to some of our key players, they can be effective uh, re, uh, substitute for such players. So that's that's what I can say. But I will not um, totally condemn the decision of the, the coach. I'm sure he has his reasons. I felt that at the time uh, Ojo in Halo said he was leaving the national team, I felt it was premature. Um, <laughs> the, the Nigeria still needed him at the time that he decided to leave. And he was the um, highest scorer uh, at the African Nations Cup at the time when he left. So, meaning that he still, he still had uh, something in the time. Right, Biko, uh, let me quickly bring the question from our, uh, from our viewers who had asked question earlier concerning our first topic. Um, Evans Evans says, the magistrate court in Abuja knows those who obtain search warrants, uh, warrants from him. And Olusha Julius says, Babajide uh, told you, why is this current administration trying to always box the judiciary to a corner by such actions? How do you respond to that? Well, I don't know what the people who are after this, I don't know what they uh, seek to improve, but they have merely put Nigeria to shame. When you appear to em embarrass and harass the judiciary in this manner, it sends a signal to, to uh, the people outside of our country, to the international community, that we do not respect the rule of law. No judge should be harassed by, by the, the central government. It shouldn't. It makes no sense. The three tiers of government are independent of one another. There is no reason for anyone to, to harass the judiciary. And I'm happy that the, the learned uh, judge stood her ground that her space will not be violate individuals and another uh, largely insignificant person claimed that they were seeing some negative things happen. It is to go on to issue a such warrant without a recourse, even to with uh, not to the knowledge of the Chief Justice of the Federation. I'm sure that Justice Muhammad must be very embarrassed where he is. How many times are we going to see this kind of harassment, especially in the life of this administration? Because some time ago it happened, some years back it happened, Justice Ademola, uh, uh, Sylvester Agota, and the rest of them harassed, their houses broken into. And what did we achieve at the end of that? Absolutely nothing. Another judge was going to be embarrassed in similar fashion. He took Governor Wiki to stop the, 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 the harassment from happening because the, Governor Wiki stopped, the, um, stopped them from violating the premises of the judge. He personally um, uh, ensured that that didn't happen. We must not get to the point that people will think that we have absolutely no regard for for the judiciary or for any arm of government at all. <laughs> right, so Biko, uh, on a final note, um, I'm trying to aggregate all of the comments, the questions you know, put forth by our viewers. Majority of them are concerned about an Amber election and, uh, and, and of course what you just discussed and the sport as well. But uh, talking, about, talking about an Amber election, they are concerned, some of them are skeptical about election holding in Anambra without any skirmish whatsoever, whether the security you know, personnel will be able to uh, handle things. Uh, for instance, somebody is asking, Babajide, can you assign a policeman to every voter? So, so just answer, you know, wrapping up. No, it's not about assigning a policeman to every voter. If the area is well policed if the area is well policed those killings that have happened before the election will not happen on election day we've had elections even in Borno states in 2011 at the height of Boko Haram insurgency as well as the 
2015. So we should be able to have elections in an uh, election in Anambra State. I'm saying, yes, there are fears that if the whole area is militarized, it could even allow for rigging, rigging the sort of rigging that um, gets the armed forces involved. We don't want to see that. And what the electoral act says is that the armed forces should not get too close to the polling centers. It's just the perimeter of, uh, of the polling uh, stations that they are going to protect. So we've seen people try to snatch ballot boxes on election day, and they were fired at. We've seen police and soldiers stop thugs from grabbing ballot boxes on election day. This is what adequate security can do. And I am saying that if you have given the fact that the people are especially supporters of ABGA, they want to vote. They've been going around with the candidate of the party everywhere he went. They are eager to vote. So if they can get a substantial guarantee of their security, they are going to be able to come out on election day. And that's why we are saying, let us see policemen parade the streets. Let us see the air wing of the Nigerian police use his helicopters to, to comb uh, the area to oversee. All right, uh, BKO. Uh, I'm seeing election, we've seen fears raised about a number of elections in the past. Even the last election, we had this kind of, uh, it wasn't this bad, but at that time, even IPOC said people should not come out that there will, that, uh, there will be no election without referendum. But the election still took place. And that's why we are saying, look, we are confident that election can still take place. We are also confident because we know that there are people who are engaging even IPOB at this time, you know, trying to get them to um, take things easy so that this election can take place. If they do not allow elections to take place, then it is possible that a, 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 a candidate who is not even the choice of the majority of the people will mm -hmm. then emerge. And if that emerges, then people will blame IPOB. So, I, I still think that the election uh, can take place, but what we'll see is that the, the turnout will be very low. But the, the election okay, BKO, I, I know place. for sure you definitely, we always definitely keep, you know, uh, keep close tabs on the development in Anambra, especially this coming Saturday. Uh, thank you so much, BKO. Yeah. But then um, Evans, Evans is trying to find out a question about um, the, uh, Chuba or Kadibu. We'll definitely let me tell Evans that we'll try. I'll send this question personally to BKO, and we'll see if we can accommodate the question next edition. Hopefully, not promising, but then I'll send it to BKO. I'm promising you on that. So next edition, we might try to answer that question. Uh, that's our show for today. Uh, today's edition of Issues with GD. Special thanks to you, Babajide Kolade Ozitoju, who is joining us from Kogi State. Thank you so much for those insightful analyses, as always. And thanks to you, to our audience, for joining us on every edition, especially with the network issue that we had from the beginning. That is Nigeria for you. But we'll try. 5G is around the corner. We'll see what that's going to bring. Remember to subscribe our, to our YouTube channel, TVC News. Click on our, uh, on our channel, TVC News, uh, subscribe button, and get the latest information. I'm Ibrahim Shita. Thank you so much for watching. See you again next edition. Bye for now.